The learning objectives of this module are to know the indications and contraindications for bubble CPAP and to learn how to set up bubble CPAP on an infant in the delivery suite or neonatal intensive care unit. Bubble continuous positive airway pressure or bubble CPAP is a non-invasive method to support spontaneous breathing in a baby, which does not require a ventilator. With bubble CPAP, pressure is generated in the breathing circuit by immersing the distal end of the expiratory portion of the circuit under a water seal. This prevents alveolar collapse, increases functional residual capacity and reduces the work of breathing. Indications for bubble CPAP may include preterm infants with respiratory distress syndrome or those who have frequent apnea and bradycardia of prematurity, transient tachypnea of the newborn and infants who have weaned off mechanical ventilation. Contraindications to bubble CPAP may include infants with coanal atresia, congenital diaphragmatic hernia, or depressed infants with frank apnea secondary to maternal anesthesia. A relative contraindication would include an infant with significant apnea of prematurity who requires a higher degree of support such as nasal intermittent positive pressure ventilation. The following section outlines the equipment currently being used at one of our NICUs to set up bubble CPAP in a patient. You should follow your own institution's guidelines. You will need the following pieces of equipment an infant nasal CPAP cannula kit. This contains nasal cannulae with connectors and adapters, a CPAP knitted head cap, and Velcro, which is used to make attachment circles as well as a moustache for the upper lip. The weight of your patient will determine the initial cannula size used. In situations where the smallest Hudson prong size is too large for the nares or blanching of curves, we use a smaller sized Inca prong. Extra thin duoderm is cut to the appropriate size. Avoid using bonding agents such as tincture of benzoin as this can increase epidermal stripping in preterm infants. Half inch latex free waterproof adhesive tape. A pair of scissors. Two size 16 rubber bands. Four size two safety pins. A chin strap may be required to minimize air leak from the mouth. Also, an orogastric tube is necessary to prevent gastric distension and can also be used for enteral feeding once the infant is stable. Now we are ready to set up bubble CPAP on our mannequin. So we match up the size of the baby with the uh, with the size of the prongs, and this is the graph that comes in the um, prong setup. So we've determined this baby is going to be a size one. So we just open it up and we take the pots out and take the hat and then the other pieces. First thing I do is I apply the Velcro to the prongs and we use the half inch Perfect, pink tape. The pink tape right at the end of the barrel here, as flat as possible. Same on the other side. This just makes the Velcro stick better with the pink tape. You try to get it as flat as you can. Then we cut the um, smooth side of the Velcro, not the loop side, the smooth side. And then we cut like a half inch strip for each side. Typically I like the seam at the top that runs parallel with the prongs, you'll see. And then we put it on and wrap it around. Nice and tight. Same on the other side in the same position. I 
again lined up with the prongs. And then we take the scissors and we just trim, trim off the excess. excess. <laughs> okay, nice and neat. Just move this stuff. And then we place these on the ends where they fit. They only fit one way. And then the little red cap. And those are ready to go. Okay. So the next thing we work on is the hat. I typically like to fold over. The hats usually fit the babies with the appropriate um, prongs. So we try to make, um, you know, probably a half or a third of the hat rolled over. And we take the uh, four number two safety pins and we'll run them with our finger underneath typically up a half inch from the edge and try to grab as much as you can and do the opposite side and the open end of the pin should be away from the baby's face the width of the tubing which you'll see later on. It's usually about a three-eighths to a half inch spacing between each and they run parallel to each other. Okay, can you see that? Um, and then we take the number 16 rubber bands and I just want to Usually put a double knot in there just to make it a little tighter. Okay. And the next thing is we want to make the mustache. Typically, like the mustache about mid cheek, or probably uh, lines up with the outside of each eye. And you want to be probably about two-thirds of this width between the edge of the nose here and the upper lip. Um, so I usually start with the looped side. It's the other one besides the opposite of that one. It's on the barrel of the prongs. You typically cut. And I usually cut about half the width of this right down the middle. And you can see it's typically from here to here, approximately. But you can see it's a little too wide. So how I start out is I'll actually round it off on one end. And then the other end. And then kind of go in to where the nose would be. So we want that pretty pretty narrow. You can see it's going to fit just like that. If we were to stick this right on the baby like this, it wouldn't stay long. So we have to put a sub base of um, duoderm, extra thin. So how we do that is I take a piece of that and I'll Take the sticky liner off and stick it on here. And then I'll trim it all the way around. There's different versions of this, but this is what I do, and I find it easier. You can see you trim maybe leave a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. Sometimes I run a little extra tab on the bottom. Make sure you be up on each cheek side. And about a sixteenth of an inch. Go. Let me turn that up a little bit. 
All right. And we peel the back of the duoderm off. Basically center it and try to keep it away from the upper part of the nose and we apply it all the way down. Oop. And then we're going to fit the hat on, but I also have to put the, I find it easy to put the rubber bands on first before I put it on the baby. So you just loop it around the bottom there. Mm, yeah. So that's sort of how it looks. Okay. So then we place the hat on. And then you want to center it on the head and then the prongs will go in. Hook the ends of the CPAP setup from the humidifier, these one's an insertory line and one's an expiratory line. And then we just place the prongs in. The prongs should be firm fit. If you have any blanching, then you've, the size you have is too big, you have to go down one size. These actually look um, pretty appropriate. Um, okay, I'm just gonna show you how we put the rubber band on. So basically it just goes over the bottom one, okay. around. And around, so it's basically that. Mm -hmm. All right, and we're gonna do the other one same way. All right, and then the prongs go back on. And again, we talked about uh, being too tight. You'd see blanching around the nears, and it's definitely too small. Uh, and then, basically, Velcro should lick. These two pieces of Velcro being the matching part should hold it down on the upper lip, the prongs, and then we just take this, the other end of the rubber band, and we flip it over. Sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> it's supposed to be easy. Alright, and you'll probably see it better on this side. Basically just kind of an X and it loops around each side of the pin. Get a better picture of it. Mm -hmm. There yeah. you go. Same with the bottom, see? Oops. <laughs> and that's basically the setup. Um, um, you don't want them you don't want the prongs buried onto the onto the nears, you want a little bit of an air space. We call it a cushion. Uh, they're also available uh, neo seals, which are kind of a little foam uh, piece that fits in between the prongs and the and the uh, the nose. Uh, so that's basically it. We also put on this, take this off, and we put it on a monitor. So we monitor the pressure in centimeters of water pressure. Typically, the range is anywhere from five all the way to seven. The following section outlines the equipment currently being used at one of our NICUs to set up the remainder of the bubble CPAP apparatus. You will need the following pieces of equipment. CPAP chamber, CPAP chamber cover, corrugated tubing hose. One end is attached to the expiratory limb of the breathing circuit with its terminal end immersed under water seal in the CPAP chamber to create positive pressure. As you can see, lowering the level of the tubing into the CPAP chamber will result in a higher amount of positive pressure delivered. Water column chamber, sterile water bottle, 0.25% acetic acid, analyzer connector, analyzer, flow meter attachment tubing, breathing circuit with corrugated tubing with inspiratory limb and expiratory limb, Oxygen blender, heated humidifier chamber. Now we will demonstrate setting up the bubble CPAP circuit with the humidifier. First thing we put in is the water chamber. Just clips in there to make sure the label's out front. 
Uh, next step is put in the water column chamber. Just slides in like that. And I'm gonna just undo the caps here and just bottom one gets plugged into the pierce the water container. Same with the top. Just push and turn. Make sure your clamps are not clamped. Next step is doesn't matter which one, you place it in here and then you hook it to one of the flow meters. Push and wiggle. And then we have to have you put in the uh, analyzer connection. Same thing, push and pull. And this is your analyzer. You place the probe in to the opening. There's only one opening, it only fits one way. So just like that. Okay. Next thing is to fill the water CPAP water chamber up to the zero on the label with acetic acid of 0.25%. There we go. And then we put our um, hose in up to the level of CPAP we want. In this setting it's going to be on 5 centimeters. Then we put the little locking cap on. And then we slide over here and put it in a little Please. holder. And so we take the breathing circuit and we take the inspiratory limb and put it onto the humidifier outlet. Then we take the expiratory side of the CPAP um, circuit and we put it on the expiratory side to the CPAP yeah. canister. So we take the patient Y off and these are the two ends that we actually attach to the CPAP prongs. Mm -hmm. It's the inspiratory side and it's the expiratory side. Down. We put both ends in here. We're going to lift the uh, rubber band up and slip through. Connect it to the connector and do the same on the other side. Doesn't matter which side goes on that, it's just a continuous flow through. And that's it.